in this video i will show you the easiest way in db2 luw to find out locking conflicts are locked agents are locked sessions are locked objects to do that let me first create a locking conflict i would be opening two terminals one terminal i would proceed as instance owner and root another terminal i would proceed as uh, db2 user user id i'm creating it here i will lock an object from terminal one in exclusive mode and i will try to access the same object in a shared mode from terminal two that would be a conflict because When you lock something in an exclusive mode, when you lock something in an exclusive mode, none of the other locks you can place, right? This is a row lock mode compatibility matrix. Or, or if you lock, look at a table level, when you lock something at exclusive level, when you are trying to do select, it is trying to put intent shared, that's not possible. Let me first open a couple of terminals. Let me first log in as a root as the requirement given here. Now I will go ahead and add a DB to user. So let me give a different home directory. Okay, it says the db2 user one already exists. So I kind of rehashed it before I did this recording. That's okay. Let's uh, create a user called db2 user two. So let me change the password. Right now, let me switch to the instance warner. I will switch to the instance warner, and I already have a database called September 2019. Let me create a table here called T1. Let me insert a record. Now what I would do is I would grant access on this database, my current database, as well as access on T1 table to the user I have just created in a previous steps. Let me grant, I'm granting database uh, access, connect privilege, and I'm granting select, now terminate. Now I would log into DB2, with a plus C option. What this plus C does is, it overrides the default auto commit option. By default, whatever you do in a DB2 is default committed. But what I would be doing is, since I'm locking a table, I'm putting it in a begin transaction. Right, in one session, what I have done here is, I have locked T1 table in a exclusive mode. Now let me log into the others session, but this time as a this time as a DB2 user. Sorry, our user ID is DB2 user2. Just to differentiate ourselves, let me change settings, the colors, so that with the black background, we are acting as a DB2 user. So I logged in as a DB2 user. Now let me source the environment. Environment location is uh, SQLly bin instance owner. Now, when I log into DB2 and say connect to this respect to database, I'm able to connect. 
if I am able to list the tables for DB2 INST1. Right, I have a list privilege. I can see this table T1 here. Let me try to connect to the T1 table. I have given already. I'm sorry, it's not connect. Sorry, select start from DB2 INST1 dot T1 table. I have given already access on this table to this db2 user 2 but this hangs here because in this session the t1 table is already logged in exclusive mode now comes uh, the dba now somebody reports this error and it's been notified to dba now it's a dba responsibility to figure out what is happening Right. The first and foremost thing I would do as a DBA is this list applications, right? Since here only two applications or sessions connected, you would only see two lines here. It is very easy to uh, uh, see because the output is very, very less. So if you are a user and you are complaining it to me that your session is hanging, right? There are two ways we proceed from that from that step the first thing is i would ask do you know the table that is involved in a locking if you say you know the table that is involved in the locking there is a one direction of um, solving if you don't know because sometimes you run it through a bad jobs and you have no clue that was written by someone else and you are maintaining and it just runs as part of a job schedule every day. It's suddenly long running. You say that you have no clue, right? Then it's left to the DBA to figure out what is locking, what is waiting, and what are the objects involved in it, okay? Now, if that is the case, let's first proceed with the second scenario where you have no information other than job is overrunning. And you connect to a respective database, this information at least you should know and when somebody is saying that job is running they would at least know that against which database that is running if you they even don't know this information it, you have to search against all the databases but that's not the case your users are generally knowledgeable that they know what database or service they are connecting to so in this case run a command called db to top with the database name and enter very beautiful tool one of the very useful utilities or, or commands I use here is U for locks. Press capital U. There you go. Right away you see on the screen. I can see locks here. You can see 1307, which is lock waiting. Here is the application name. If user is connecting through a different application, you would see that application here. You would see here the log status is not granted and it is logged by 1300. So this guy 1307 is waiting for lock on this object, but that lock is that object is already logged by 1300. That you can see it here 1300. If you want more information about this agent A, just press A. You would see a uh, input prompt here. Enter 1307 and press Enter. Here also you can see it in detail. Okay. So and so guy is waiting, blocked by 1300 on db2inst1.t1. Okay. Now what we do? What would you do? The standard approach. DB2PD hyphen DB September 2009. You can also see that information through these hyphen W logs, but this does not show the object ID. Right now, if you see our query session is still waiting. Now, what I would do is let me kill this session, let me kill the blocker guy. Right. Because this is not a good sign. Somebody locking table in exclusive mode. 
let me connect to the database and show you that information even through a table there is a way you can see that information even through a table if you know the object name i will put this in a note section and i will add a link there right if you run this query even you would figure it out sometimes if you know this information is also very big sometimes so you would say tab name equal to t1 then you would see logs held on t1 that's a 1300 this is the first scenario right i spoke about you are at a junction where you have two options one when you know object name when you don't know the object name right so let's come back to the normal prompt and say db2 list applications the way to terminate this is db2 force application and give application id this would terminate the session but before that let me minimize and press enter watch what happens here when i do this you see this is terminated immediately the exclusive lock is released now this session is able to put uh, intent shared and shared logs and read the data and it came back in a production environment in my opinion there are there are two major pressing points for a database administrator the first one is when your database crashes you have to bring services back to a normal state as soon as possible the second is this locking you have to solve this problem on the fly the expectation is you be in a session with application user and fix this because reproduction of a locking issue is not easy sometimes you have to work with application user you have to ask them to run the session and you monitor it from back back end you miss a couple of times you ask them run it again and again so in advance you have to practice these two scenarios one is restore of a database and roll forward to the latest point second locking scenarios the more number of times you practice that much easier is your dba job remaining all if somebody says table space is full you have some time right somebody wants a query output you have certain time somebody says promote a code you have certain buffer time but locking so on the fly you get a call from support and just you just have to log in and, and fix it or at least give them some input see locking is never a dba problem but you are expected as a dba to give required information to application development make sense well done. Thanks for watching this video. Looking forward to talk to you in the next one.